Welcome to the Simply Real Life podcast. I'm Sarah, the founder of Simply Real Health, here to help you simplify, amplify, and elevate your life. This show is for those of you who want the real talk on how to live a more intuitive and intentional life, a life that's healthy from the inside out, and one that feels more effortless, aligned, simple, and more alive. We cover it all from health, wellness, mindset, motherhood, daily habits and rituals, to business and relationships, creativity and growth, and tiny tricks to feeling your best and the energetics behind it all. All filled with personal stories, unfiltered conversations, and of course, answering all of your burning questions, all in the way of simplicity and keeping it real so that you can create your own version of your healthiest life. Let's do it. Hi, you guys, and welcome back to the podcast. Okay, I hope you are all feeling this energy of spring. Like, I don't know about you, but for me, I'm like, yes, I am here for this. It just every time the seasons change, it's like this influx of just fresh energy. Like, I love how the foods change. Like, you start to see different types of foods and different produce <laughs> come back into season after it feels like a long winter. Things that are like fresh and bright and colorful. And it's just like, oh, yeah, remember salads? Like, remember smoothies? Remember like all these fun vegetables and fruit that only come around in spring and summer? It just feels like this reinvigorating time. And I see that, you know, yes, with food, of course, and as I'm cooking, but also it's just such a good time to like look at your daily routines and your habits and look to ways like, how could I switch this up or mix things up just slightly? It's a real, really like beautiful way to actually look at the whole entire year is to start looking at it at things like season by season, you know, like what do I want to call in or do more of, or what do I need more of this season? What do I need a little less of? Like what are the ways I want to eat or the, you know, like the water I'm drinking, like, is there something I could do there to mix up? Maybe it's lemons. Maybe it's throwing some chia seeds in there. Maybe it's cucumber slices. Maybe it's chlorophyll. Maybe, you know, there's so many different possibilities, but sometimes I think we just get stuck as humans. We just get stuck in autopilot all of the time. There's a magic to it when you can fully embrace it and be like, yeah, let's mix it up. Let's freshen things up. Let's try some different things. Let's incorporate some new routines that maybe you couldn't do or you forgot about in the colder months. And there's things about every season to get excited about. And I just feel like it's a way to keep things fresh. You know, so much of our daily life truly does stay the same unless we take a more active role in how could you just infuse more things that help you really do feel alive. Okay. Well, that's my update over here. This week I had one of the best questions come in that it was like, this is perfect for a podcast episode because it's something that is, you know, it's not just like a one sentence answer. I mean, to be real, is anything a one sentence answer in my book? (laughs) Um, Okay. So here it is. The question was what mistake that you see people making most of all, like when it comes to their health overall, that is a great, great question because I've been doing this as many of you know, for over 10 years, a couple weeks ago was our 11th year anniversary, which is crazy. It's simply real health. And I have been coaching even before that. So this has been almost like 18 years of coaching. So I have seen it all. I have seen probably everything. Nothing could freak me out. (laughs) Nothing. I think it's weird. I have seen it all truly and heard it all. I have to say that this question has like a very clear answer to me. The thing that I see most people ignore, not know about is wanting to make a change with their health. So knowing that they're going to do some shifting around with their food and probably their workouts. But the mistake I see them make is that they go so extreme and intense because truly that's how we're all trained and taught. That's every diet out there. That's every marketing campaign, especially food marketing campaign is all about the extremes. And it's done because the human brain loves drastic changes. We love a good before and after. We love like extremes. We just live for it. It's so deeply ingrained in our brains that we can't avoid being drawn to it. Everybody wants a quick fix, especially the way we've been taught about food and the way we're taught about health. 
is always framed in that mindset of like, what's the quickest, fastest way to get the most extreme results in the littlest amount of time. But the problem of what happens when you do that is that you are just following something sort of blindly, like you're being a robot. You're like, okay, eat this at this time, at this amount, like, to, you know, <laughs> trust me, I've done every single diet out there. So I, I know, and I am well versed in this. It is basically teaching you to disconnect even more from your body and just follow whatever that piece of paper is saying, <laughs> or whatever, like the diet book is saying, whatever the method is. And you know what, there are always going to be new methods. Like, it is a multi-billion dollar industry, even more than just the diets, because maybe that's, I'm dating myself like back in the 90s and the early 2000s were like diets. There really were like diet crazes, but now it's more like labels of how you eat. Are you paleo or are you vegan? Are you keto? You know, are you doing low fat? It's like these separate camps, like you are this thing and therefore you're not any of the other things. Whereas I believe, and as you probably know, if you're listening to this podcast, like it's just about real food. Like, let's just all go back to the basics, every different category of real food, you know, and then from that point, it's about finding what works best for you and your body, which requires some testing, some playing. But my point is this, is that when we decide that we want to make a change, it's always like we want it to be the quickest, the fastest. And whatever it takes to get there, we like want to sprint there. <laughs> we want to follow directions. We want to not listen to our bodies, completely tune out, just follow along and then get us to this place. But then what happens when we're at that place is that we realize, okay, that wasn't really sustainable. That wasn't something I could probably do in my normal life, at least living a life that you want to feel freedom with food and a joy with food and, and celebrating the beauty of food, like with the people that you love and these experiences and the ambiance around it. It's like none of that is involved when you're looking at a way of eating that is very prescriptive and has very set like yeses and nos. And so the problem, not only when they get to that place of like, it's not sustainable, is that then we don't know where to go because we've followed this plan. So we know how to follow the plan. And when we follow the plan, we think that we're being good, you know, quote unquote, good. I'm being good. I'm eating good. And then the minute that we don't, it's like, we're like stepping off the cliff and it's like, Whoa, like a free fall. Like you don't know what it's like to live in your normal life. Like you haven't learned the tools. You haven't learned how to navigate things. You haven't learned the emotions that you go through on a daily basis and how it's connected to food. You like are jumping off this cliff. You have no resources of like what it looks like to live in your normal daily life with joy, with freedom, with food, and not being so extreme. And so the only way that you know how to operate is like being quote unquote on the wagon or off the wagon. And that mentality is just so damaging long-term because then what that creates is like this massive swing in between the two extremes because nobody can live like a perfect robot all the time, you know, if they're living according to these standards or yes foods or no foods or like what's good for you and bad for you. Nobody can live like that, right? Or very few people. And if they do, I would question the amount of like, love and joy and appreciation they have for food and their relationship to it. And all of these things that are part of a truly healthy life overall, not just only about your food or the physical part of health. That's the biggest thing I see is like this obsession with the all or nothing mentality, but then also that there's nothing being done out there to help us disconnect from that place. Like that's all we know. If we're being good, it's to the most extreme. If we're being bad, then it's also to the most extreme. But what does life look like in the in-between, in the gray, in our day-to-day -day life when we're feeling the actual feelings, our anxieties, our fears, the stuff that happens with work or our family or our relationships, like all of that impacts our body. All of that impacts our emotions, our mood, our thoughts, our, our beliefs, like it's all connected. And so continuing to do things that are that version of extreme or, you know, 30 day challenges, 30, you know, like eating this way for a month while yes, they can give you some good momentum. And I think there's, there's something great about that, you know, and something needed. Sometimes people need that massive jumpstart, but then also not stopping there. So then being committed to, okay, after the 30 days are over, 
what's my plan? How can I take this now to the next level, which includes not just blindly following something, but taking what you have learned about your body and how it feels with different foods. And then let's go to the next level. Like, let's start thinking about what are the situations in my daily life that don't work with this way of eating and how can we make it work? How can there, you know, what kind of options could I look at? What restaurants are around me? Like, what could I look for on different menus? What are the dishes I want to bring when I'm going to somebody else's house? Like actually getting into the nitty gritty of your real life and figuring out actual solutions for the things that maybe trip you up or throw you off your game or like pull you off the wagon. You know, I hate that word. I hate that phrase. Um, there's so much there. That's like where the juicy stuff is and figuring out like this balance of eating food that makes you feel really good most of the time. And then also having stuff that like brings a lot of joy and like makes you feel like life is worth living. Having the balance of the two is a much more sustainable way, like a way that you can feel for the most part, really pretty good most days, like where your energy is great and you're not going through these massive highs and lows of like the emotions and your hormones and where everything just gets really messy. But it's like being able to get to the point where you can have this really beautiful blend of all the things that make you feel pretty good and these kind of daily rituals, habits, non-negotiables, all the things that we talk about in the Simply Real Life program, The Method, like creating those things and figuring out what they are for you. That's the mistake I see most people make is that they are A, all or nothing and so extreme about it, but then B, they just stop there. C, if I had to throw in the next one, it's that they never incorporate like the mental and emotional parts because it impacts so much of what you're hungry for, what you're craving, like the ways we've learned to cope with different emotions or stuff down or numb. So much of that is ingrained from childhood and like what you saw other people doing around you, what our culture and like what society norms are, are like very actually weird when you look at them or start to uncover like, where did this come from? And are there maybe better ways to process my emotions, you know, or are there better ways to do that that don't have to deal with like eating through a bag of chips you know, or or like going for ice cream whenever you feel sad. There's so much of that stuff, even just like daily stress of eating, snacking incessantly because you don't want to do a task at work. I think there's this huge disconnect, you know, between how we're putting all these pieces together. Like they can't exist in separate silos of our life where it's like our physical health in one box and then our mental health in another box and our emotional health in the next box and our you know spiritual and energetic health in the next box it's like they're all connected and there is not a single diet out there that addresses those things that's why i created the simply real life method because I'm like this is so annoying this is so frustrating because i was that person i was that person who kept getting stuck and never able to get to the next level i was so disconnected from my body i had no idea idea the emotions I was feeling and how it was connected to what I was like reaching for, you know, and like the ways that I had been taught to like work through emotions or stuff. We just never get taught and it can work up until a certain point in your life when you're like, I'm tired of this, you know, like there's gotta be a better way instead of continuing to repeat these cycles that don't actually make you feel good. So This I think is the whole point. Have your health be something that does feel more effortless and free and enjoyable. Like that's the whole point of your life, like to feel better in your daily life. That's why you would pay attention to your health. You know, it's to operate at the next level. It's to to be the best version of yourself. It's not just only thinking about your food, your workouts being perfect. You have to go deeper than that. It's the inner work right? It's the inner work of understanding your internal thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, how your brain is wired. If you don't look at those things, nothing that you're trying to do on the outside will stick for very long. And then you're sort of stuck in that cycle. The more you start to do that, the more trust you lose in yourself. You know, the more you start to doubt your body, the more you start to doubt its ability to digest food well or to assimilate it or to metabolize it or process it well. It can be so discouraging and so exhausting. So many of us have this desire to be our best selves and to thrive and to feel like, you know, life is happening for them. And having that semblance of like trust in your own body 
in its own rhythms, in what's going on, in what foods are working for you, knowing and trusting that at least with eating real food, that you know it's food that your body can digest and process easily. You're not weighing it down. You're not demanding a ton of work for your body to do to just like digest your food. You know that it's nutrient dense and serving in some way, even if it's not perfect. Like you can have ice cream. That's real food ice cream. You just look for things that are like four ingredients, you know, made with normal, natural things. Like same thing with cookies, with cocktails, with things like you'll notice in my cookbook, there's, there's no deprivation here. This is about having and enjoying all of the things in your life that you want to, while also being in tune with your own body and its needs and how that may be different than even people within your own family or within your own circle of friends. So it's so, I see just so many women get just so stuck and frustrated and then lose that trust in themselves and in their own bodies because they're missing out on the key component here, which is not being all or nothing and not being obsessed with the quick fix, but be in it for the long game. Like get to know your own body because you're going to be with your body the rest of your life. You know, it's like being in relationship with yourself just as much as you are with the people around you. You've got to like have that relationship to yourself, get to know yourself, get to have ways where you start to trust yourself, where your body is not thinking that you're going to just be bombarding it with stuff it can't handle and that it doesn't like and that makes it, your blood sugar crazy and makes your digestion bad. If it was any other relationship in your life and you were just, you know, slamming stuff in and just being mean to it and talking down to it and just like having no time for it, no care, no energy, think of what that would create in a relationship. And that's how so many of us relate to our own selves. Like this is the long-term game. Our health, our food, our workouts, our thoughts, our emotions. These are things that every human deals with. Every human. It's not unique to us. It's every human has these things. So why not learn how to get to know your body, how to work better with your body, how to be a better teammate to your body, the things that help it feel the best why not spend a little bit of time? Like even if you just spent, this is what I tell like all the women in Simply Real Life, the method, even if you just spend the next six weeks, just focusing a little bit more on that and on yourself and getting to know yourself and figuring out these things and thinking about things and being a little bit more intentional and asking questions and playing and experimenting and having these fun like tests and trials that you can do for just six weeks, imagine the impact that will make on the rest of your year, let alone the, the the next decades of your life. Even just a little bit of time where we have never spent it before, because again, we've never been taught that this is important. It is the number one thing that actually changes how you operate and how you feel every single day of your life comes back to this. And your body, guess what? It's going to change. The things that your body's thriving with now may not work next season. It may not work a year from now. We go through so many transitions that affect our emotional health, our mental health, like our physical health specifically, so many different changes, even with different hormones over the years, even with different amounts of stress, like we are always new and different. So learning how to have that connection with your body is key. Otherwise, you're going to be jumping from one to the next to the next thing and always these extremes and feeling down on yourself, not trusting yourself, and it just gets worse and worse over time. So when I say that it's the number one thing that is missing, I mean it. It is life-changing. What happens to people who start to put aside all of the sexy, the quick, the, the rapid, the transformation overnight And just be like, that's not actually what I want. What I want is to like feel happy. What I want is to feel joyful. What I want is to like look around at my life and feel grateful. What I want is to be appreciative of my body. What I want is to have that trust and that connection and knowing what I need and being able to show up for myself and give it. To know that like when you do that, imagine how that could generationally change your family. To see and witness somebody else being empowered in their own life, making decisions that are ultimately nourishing, right? And, and uplifting and elevating 
that type of energy, it spreads in such a beautiful way. It is very counter-cultural what I'm saying. This is not something that like we see talked about. It's not something that is modeled very often. But I think that is why I feel so passionate about this and about teaching this because for so many years of my life, as you all know, I was living in that very same place. And it makes me emotional to think about if I had never gone through these steps to get to where I am today, where I feel like I do feel effortlessly healthy, where it comes naturally, where it feels like very rhythmic and very beautiful. And although, yes, there's these tiny shifts and changes, and I've been through so many transitions in my own life from like external stressors to internal stressors, including pregnancy and postpartum and and all of the things and SIBO and PCOS. And I know that I can be the best caretaker for my body. That has taken years, right? But it doesn't have to take years. It just is looking at things in a much different way, in a much more connected way, a much more like holistic, like whole view of you in your own life, in this season you're in at now. So today, I just want you to think about that in your own life. Like, where do you feel like you're at? Do you feel like you are in that place where you have this unshakable, deep trust and connection with yourself, with your health, with your body, with your emotions, with what's going on around you? Or do you feel like you are constantly searching? constantly looking for the next thing, always going through these extremes and these cycles that keep repeating themselves. And then you feel worse and worse about yourself overall. That's not the direction that you're guessing that you want to go. But sometimes we're just so in autopilot. And so just like our heads down, we're just doing the same thing. We're going through the emotions. You know, everyone else around us is doing that. So we don't think to like stop and question or even know that there is a different way to operate and be. And so I hope in sharing this, that this inspires you to think about that and think of where you are. And if there's some, you know, tiny, even if you're not ready to do something like the method right now, where it's like six weeks of this work, there are so many things you can start to do, including saying that you're not going to do another diet or a very rigid way of eating, but instead just start to eat real food. Just start to pay attention how your body feels with that. You can start to play and test and just have this attitude of a little bit more playfulness, right? In your life, instead of it being so rigid and so serious and you're compartmentalizing your health and your food and it's this box that, you know, that you're checking off, just going through the motions. But instead, just start to think about the unlearning, maybe even more so than learning new things. It's the unlearning of all the stuff that has not been helpful or led to those extremes or been, you know, fueled by marketing or um, ways that other industries make money. It's just how do I make it feel more simple? Like take the burden off instead of adding more to it. Whew. You guys, once I get going on this stuff, I just can't stop. <laughs> can't stop. This is my passion in life, as I'm sure you can tell. But in, it's really so much about leaving these all or nothing extremes and finding a place of better alignment for yourself with more grace and more balance. It's not only the thing that I see impact and change people's lives over and over again and year after year, but it's the thing that's changed my own life and my own relationship to food and my health the most. And I want that for each one of you. If you have any questions about it, let me know. This is truly my life's work and what I feel the most passionate about. If you're going to try any of these things from the episode today, come let me know. I would love to know. I would love to know your questions that you have. Just come find me on Instagram over at Simply Real Health. I would love to chat and just get to know where you're at and maybe even give you some ideas of places that would be really good to start. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And I love you so much. If you enjoyed this episode and want more like it, make sure you're subscribed to the Simply Real Life podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and maybe share it with a friend or two. That would mean the world. 